What's going on everyone? Been a, long, a little time, but welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, a big welcome. Here at Cruising the South, we share with you guys all the awesome places we go with the boat, but also all the services, maintenance, and problems and solutions we come up with, right? Just like a, a real world scenario, real world, you know, solutions to the problems that we come up with. I uh, So I want to share with you guys that, uh, you know, because of course, if you've been following the channel, I just replaced one of the engines of my boat, right? And, uh, you know, I had several subscribers, you know, uh, uh, several of my watches become subscribers because they are probably, you know, go, gonna go through the same thing. So I figured I would share with you guys why I went back down from a 750 CFM carburetor to a 600 CFM carburetor. And, um, the reason is that I, I put it, you know, because before, prior to me changing the engine, there was a 600 CFM on it, you know, and the engine that was right next to it, you know, my uh, the twin, it was a 600 CFM on it too. So, but while I was changing the engine through, uh, you know, YouTube wisdom, I guess I'll call it, I, uh, you know, came to, you know, think that the 750 would have been better on my, in my scenario. And, um, uh, in most cases, it would be, you know, like per se, you know, like if you have, uh, you know, one of these 454s in one, like in a, a skinny fast boat, is a completely different scenario than having, uh, you know, this 454 on a, uh, a cabin cruiser like mine, a 33 footer. And, uh, you know, she's loaded with extras, you know, like they, you know, it's a quite a heavy boat. And uh, so, you know, if we were to think about it, like a, a light, a fast boat, it would go through 3000 RPMs without even skipping a, a beat, right? Like uh, you know, the engine has no, um, the engine has no load at that point, you know? So you're only gonna get load, you know, around like 4000 RPM to a 500, you know, 5000, 5500 RPM. And uh, my, on my uh, setup, my engine stop out at 4000 RPM. Okay, so I mean, uh, 4,000 to 4,400 RPMs. And uh, so my best cruising speed would be at 3,100 RPM. 3,200 RPM, I'm already like, you know, losing efficiency, right? Like I'm consuming more, not getting that much more speed and just increasing the fuel consumption and not getting much. So 3,100 RPM is the, my best scenario, my, uh, my best RPM, okay? And um, so and if I was to make the math on, uh, on knowing that my uh, max RPM is 4,400 RPMs, it would be, you know, uh, the, the way, the, the math, for that that you can make for this would be your cubic inch or my case would be you know 454 times my max rpm you know and then i get that and i um and i times that that result to my volumetric efficiency it's you know a uh, rebuild 454 you know like they would say you'll probably have like 80 to 90 percent efficiency okay so uh so it'll be 454 times 4400 rpms times 0.85 and that would give, and then I divided that by 3456. How they got the 3456, I don't know, but it's a thumb rule, you know, so that's, I just did it, and that's how, you know, the, 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 the top guys do it. So, you know, and that gives me a 491 CFM at 4400 RPMs, right? So that's, even a 500, uh, you know, a CFM carburetor would work fine for me. But, you know, and I can even be a little, even more, um, you know, I can even be more less generous than that even, and not even um, the uh, times uh, by the volumetric efficiency. You know, let's just consider that the engine is running a hundred percent efficiency, right? It's the volumetric efficiency is a hundred percent, which that's not going to be the case, right? But you know, we're just playing safe for the numbers here. So you would just times, you know, four fifty four. Uh, my cubic inch uh, 454 times my max RPM, it should be 4400, and uh, you get that result, and you divide that by 3456, and that would give me 578 CFMs, okay? So, and that's at 4400 RPMs, right? And like, I never even pushed this boat this hard, you know, like I always go to the max of uh, 3200 RPMs. At that point, I am cruising, she's sliding, you know, I don't push more than that, I don't have to, you know? So, um, 
and the reason why you know i came back i put now the 600 back over there is because the 750 was not working well you know like i put the 750 over there and i was disappointed you know like she was bugging down like um not uh, technically no she ran fine all the way into the transition point okay where you know my secondary is open it would be like right around 2700 rpms so as soon as i get to the, to the 2700 rpms and i would push her to 3000 rpms she would lose a couple rpms okay nothing much but she would go like eh, kind of bug down a little bit maybe just run too rich and then like after that you know she would you know pick up and like you know go to 3000 rpms so um you know she was bugging she was fouling you know so now i had two options i would you know buy the 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 jet set and the spring set and start tweaking this carburetor down you know like you know lean her down trying to set up you know and read my uh, uh spark plugs and try to get her back in shape or just go to what you know what it was there already it was a 600 cfm you know which you know, in my case is the eldo brock um 1909 it's a 600 uh, a cfm marine uh carburetor and uh in, in the, that's the carburetor that was on the other engine and the other engine never skipped a beat right like pushed her right to where i wanted her to be never you know so i tried the 750 it was way too rich i could try to tune it down but i'm just playing it easy and putting back what it was there it was a 600 cfm and plus you know with the math that I just explained to you, it, it's a safe bet, you know, like, and who runs, you know, I, I'm never going to run this boat at, at uh, 4,400 RPMs. And even if I was, I'm still below the CFM numbers that I would need at that point, right? Now, these numbers would change, of course, you know, if you're, if your max are, you know, if you run your boat at 5,000 RPMs at cruising speed, you know, and most fast boats do more than that. So at that point, your CFM would increase for sure at those higher RPMs, you know. So then you would need the 750, you know, and plus. But, you know, by the uh, Eldo Brock instructions, I, worked, I came to learn that uh, um, all the way up to the 454, the 600 CFM is where you want to be. And unless if you go to that point where, like, you know, you have a modified 454, then you're probably going to want that extra CFM. Then just play with what your results, you know. But on my case, guys, Mercruiser Cruiser 454, 600 CFMs, my sweet spot. But please do your, this math, you know, check your math. Like, get your, your cubic inch, in my case, 454, you times that by your max RPM, and then you divide that by your uh, uh, volumetric efficiency. It's your most rebuild engines or new engines. You will be playing around 85%. If you want to be even less conservative, you don't even do the, you know, for, no, don't even divide it by the 0.85. You just do 454 times max RPMs divided by 3456. And that result is your CFM required for your engine at least a, a safe bet you know and from that point on put some new spark plugs on the engine run her for a couple for a few hours and read your spark plugs take them out take a look is it then you're gonna have a pretty good idea where you need to go up or down but on my case i am right on where i want to be so uh i'm gonna end the video here guys thank you very much for following along and i see you guys in the very very next episode the next episode that we're gonna take this bad boy out and i want to do some comparison on my engines because in one engine i have a you know my new engine now is fresh water cooled right i installed the fresh water cool kit on it and oh my god so sweet and uh, my other my older engine you know which only have like 300 hours on it but um uh, uh, she is uh, raw water cooled so I'm gonna be able to get like a pretty good numbers between the two and also I want to compare my steams because I have uh, uh, my exhaust is um, on the side of the boat I have you know straight exhaust to the side I mean it goes through an air lifter but you know since my exhaust is on the side and not on the out drive out back there uh, you know at high rpms you know you see steam because of the water mixing with the hot exhaust out so i'm going to be able to compare the steam from the fresh water cooled to the uh raw water cooled engine and that will be a pretty cool test so if you're not subscribed yet consider subscribing pretty cool content out here just real life scenarios of a boater thank you very much guys and i'll see you in the very next episode